That's a fish. It's a pig. It's a pig, guys. Oh, woo! Oh my God, that was so loud. There she goes. Whoosh! <laughs> yes, the pink Sanko. Woo! Texas, yes, sir. They work there. Florida, oh yeah, buddy. They work there too. California. Totally works there. New York? Forget about it. New England? They slay them! And in Canada? There's no doubt, eh? This could quite possibly be the single greatest bait that consistently catches fish everywhere. So let's break it down. I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know about the world's most universal bait, the one and only Senko. Today on Captain's Corner. So what is a Sanko? Well, a Sanko is actually a brand name of a particular style of stick bait. Now, stick baits have been around for ages, but the massive popularity of this particular style of stick bait definitely started with the introduction of the Yamamoto Sanko. This simple cigar-shaped soft plastic became so popular that it quickly became a top bait of tournament anglers all across the country and it is arguably the number one all-time money winner. It became so popular so quickly that every soft plastic manufacturer scrambled to quickly make their version of a Senko. And no matter what those companies called their bait, the die had already been struck, and everyone simply now refers to all of them as Senkos. You know, the beauty of a Senko is in its simplicity. The basic design of this shape makes it a finesse bait that simply cannot be fished wrong. There are literally dozens of ways to fish one of these. Texas rig, wacky rig, Nico rig, on a drop shot, weightless, even big weight punching all produce fish. But without a doubt, the subtle soft quiver of a slowly sinking Sanko is hands down the number one reason why a Sanko is so irresistible. One of the only baits that I know of that can literally produce bites without you doing a single thing. Just cast it out there and hold on. Now, there's always going to be an argument on what is the best way to fish a Sanko. Every angler is going to have his preferred method and I encourage that. But today, I'm going to show you my top three favorite ways to fish a Senko. Notice, all three of my favorite methods are all weightless. To me, the greatest thing about a Senko is that tantalizing little quiver it has on the drop. As the Senko is allowed to naturally sink, it produces this tiny little wiggle, embracing the resistance of the water as it slowly sinks through it. And it forces the entire bait to quiver. For whatever the reason is, this absolutely drives bass nuts. They seemingly can't resist this slow moving, tantalizing stick of plastic. That finesse little attraction is exactly what Gary Yamamoto designed this bait to do. So fishing it weightless is a no brainer to me. With no extra weight to drag that bait down, this allows that bait to do the dance that it was designed to Yo, do. Here's another one, not bad either. Oh, it's a nice one too. Oh yeah. Oh, it's another pig. Get out of here. Yes. Crushing him. Oh, look how fat this girl is. <laughs> so fat. Just a ch another chunk. What a beautiful pig. On the Sanko. Back up in behind the tree. I seen the little pocket. As soon as I threw that Sanko in there, swirl. And he, she went and grabbed it. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. This has just been a great day. My number one, I call this Big Texas. It's a six inch Sanko Texas rig on a five aught extra wide gap hook. This size, weight, and hook combo is responsible for some of the biggest bass I've caught this year. And even though it gets those big girls to commit, don't worry, it catches them in all sizes. This is my go-to method of fishing a Senko. That large 5 aught heavy wired extra wide gap hook is the perfect pairing to the bigger profile of a 6 inch Senko. That particular style of hook allows me to keep it weedless by texposing the point of the hook back into the bait. 
but that bigger, heavier hook adds just the right amount of weight to be able to pull that bigger Sanko down, but still allowing it to have that soft, quivering action. It actually balances the weight out, allowing that bait to fall straight down, twitch it up, and that heavier hook at one end will actually force the bait to glide off into the direction it's facing. Stop it, and it smooths out, straightens out, and gets that little quivering sink again. That makes this Senko a deadly cover bait around grasses, pads, brush piles, docks, and other structure. And bonus, it skips extremely well. Get it way back, underneath docks, overhanging trees and brush. Let it sink, twitch it up, let it glide, and let it sink again. And hold on, boom, absolute Senko magic. That's a fish. That's a good fish. Oh, giant. Stay on you. Oh, it's a, it's a pig, guys. We got a giant. We got a huge pig. Huge pig. Oh, oh my God. This is giant. Oh, my God. Stay on. Stay on. Stay on. Stay on. Stay on. Oh, woo. Oh, my God. That was so loud. Look at that stud. Look at the mouth on that thing. We got a big one. We got a big one. Yes. Oh my God. This has got to be seven pounds, six pounds. I don't know. What a stud. What a stud. That's what we're here for. We came for guys. There she goes. Whoosh. <laughs> yes. Let's get another one. The pink Sanko. Woo. Because my big Texas method is a fairly big bait and they're often fishing it in pretty heavy cover, the gear I go with on this method is going to be pretty heavy. I like to use a medium heavy fast action rod, seven foot to seven foot three to be able to really launch that bait out a big distance. And of course you want to couple it up with a good fast reel for two good reasons. You're going to be fishing this bait in fairly heavy cover and a lot of times it'll be on a slack line. You're going to want the speed of a good reel to be able to haul that bass out of that cover as fast as you can. And also, when it grabs on that slack line, you want to be able to catch up to it as quickly as you can to get that big, powerful hook set that you need with a medium heavy fast action rod. And on the reel, I'm going with braid. 40 pound Cast Pro braid is what I'll put on that reel. And depending on the clarity of the water, whether or not I'll use a fluorocarbon leader. And number two, weedless and wacky. No doubt about it, a wacky rig Sanko is a well-known assassin. No bass seems to be able to say no to this wacky, goofy looking rig. And anglers all across the country prove it time and time again. The wacky rig is king when it comes to fishing Sankos. When the bite really gets tough, grab a wacky rig. And more often than not, you're gonna find that bite. Why does a wacky rig work so well? I honestly don't know. But if I had to guess, it's because you're doubling up that tantalizing factor of a Sanko. By hooking right through the middle, it allows both ends of that Sanko to have that little quiver. Give it some pops and twitches and the bait flaps up and down, moving a whole bunch of water and tantalizing even the wariest bass to strike. Now there is a variety of wacky rig accessories out there from hooks to jig heads to o-rings etc and all the methods of rigging a wacky rig seem to be pretty effective but i prefer my wacky rig weightless and weedless it's got a much more pronounced wiggle when it's weightless any extra weight drags that bait down faster and doesn't allow it time to really have that tantalizing quiver my wacky rig is a standard five inch sanko it just seems to have the best dance and sink at five inches. I use a one-aught or two-aught weedless wacky rig hook. If you can't find that, get yourself a two-aught octopus hook. A two-aught octopus hook is a great wacky rig hook, but it's not weedless on its own. So here's a nice little pro tip on how to use a regular hook and make your wacky rig weedless. By feeding it through the middle of that bait, that's how it would normally look. Octopus hooks have a little bit longer of a shank and a bend to them. If you slide that right up to the top to that bend, 
turn the hook around so it's facing back into the bait and then you can bury that hook point just like so. Burying that hook point back into the bait. You now have a wacky rig bait that is weedless. It's not a perfect system, but it's a real easy way to have more confidence in running your wacky rig weedless. Being weightless and weedless, I have confidence to be able to skip this bait deep into cover, underneath docks, in between pads, or grasses where those big bass are gonna lie. Weightless, wacky, and weedless. An absolute deadly way to fish your Sankos. Well, he's running out here towards me. I can't tell how big he is yet. Oh, he's decent. Decent. There we go. Woo. <laughs> yeah, he's not bad at all. He took that and ran away towards me. There it is. <laughs> On the wacky rig. Not a bad fish at all. Really only been fishing about five minutes. We got our first one. Perfect. Wacky rig. Strikes first. I fish my wacky rigs on my spinning gear. A nice seven foot medium to medium heavy fast action rod, generally using a 2000 to 3000 series reel, 3000 better. And I'm gonna have that spooled up with either 20 pound braid and a fluorocarbon lever or straight fluorocarbon. Wacky rig is a finesse style. And for me, a spinning combo like this is a much easier way to fish a wacky rig. With this combo, I can skip it right up to the edge or inside a cover with ease. And I have enough strength and backbone in the medium heavy and the 3000 series reel and that 20 pound braid to be able to pull fish out of whatever cover it's gonna get into. And number three, top water. <laughs> yeah, that's right, top water. A top water Sanko. A Sanko can make an excellent top water bait if you work it just right. Now, I don't know exactly what a Sanko is imitating. Is it a worm? Is it a fish? I don't know. But no matter what Mr. Yamamoto originally thought this looked like, if you work it across the top quickly enough, it does a pretty darn good job of imitating a fleeing and injured bait fish. Snap it, pop it, twitch it, walk the dog-ish, whatever it is. Just keep it moving fairly quickly across the surface and it can trigger some massive explosions. For top water, I prefer to use a smaller Sanko. The four inch if you can find them, but a five inch will work fairly well too. The smaller Sankos just seem to work better when it comes to top water. And I really try to stick to flashier colors for the top water. Something with a little sparkle or shimmer just seems to attract bites that much more. But the key to top water is in the rigging. Get a one aught or two aught offset worm hook. A straight shanked offset worm hook. Nothing too finesse, but you don't want an extra heavy wire hook that adds extra weight that's gonna help pull that bait down. We're trying to keep this bait on the surface. You're gonna rig it Texas rig just like you would the big Texas. Start it off right in the center like you normally would, but bury that hook point a little bit farther. When you pop it out the side, you're going to work it down and wiggle it through so that the eye of the hook is actually buried inside of that plastic. It's just gonna help keep it from snagging up on anything as you're working across the surface. You're gonna mark it off to see where the hook point's gonna go through. Bend your bait, stick your hook point through so it's nice and straight. Make sure it is nice and straight. Pinch it back, pull it forward so you can bury that hook point inside the bait, keeping it nice and weedless as you go. It is smooth, it is slender, the hook is as close to the body as you can get it, and it's gonna work across the surface with very little resistance now. Work this across the surface along weed lines, over sparse grass, beside docks and other structure, and through pad fields where there's enough water in between to allow that bait to dance across the surface. It shimmies, it shakes, it darts, it wakes, it creates a tremendous commotion on the surface and triggers some explosive reaction strikes. Working a top water Sanko could be just the ticket you need to get a strike out of those wary bass that thought they had seen it all. Top. Oh, this morning dawn color. I think I like it. Oh, I missed him. Oh, I definitely had my, my shots at that fish. Blew up on a Sanko, didn't get it. Oh my God. How did he not have that? Do you see that explosion? Seemed like a decent fish too. Jesus, 
He hit it again. That is so crazy. Four hits on this Senko on that from this fish. I got him. I got him. Oh yeah, we got him this time. Oh yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> It's about time. And he's a decent fish, too. Oh, it's about time. There it is. Nice two pounder. Solid. Whew. Solid. <laughs> yeah. On the pink morning dawn. Loving it. Loving it. And I personally like to fish my top water Sankos on casting equipment. I'm just more comfortable with that. I like to use a medium action rod with a moderate fast action tip. And I like to use a good speed reel, like a 7.1 to 8.1 reel. You need that faster reel to be able to catch up that slack real quick when a fish does come and strike. I actually like to use a braided backing line, like a 30 pound test, and I use a 10 to 15 pound test monofilament leader. Monofilament has that little bit of stretch that's gonna help keep that thinner wire hook pinned inside that bass's mouth without bending it out. So there it is guys, no matter how you break it down, the number one most universal bait out there in bass fishing has got to be the Senko. The most universal bait in the world, the soft plastic stick bait, better known as the Senko. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you learned a little something. If you did, make sure you smash the heck out of that like button. But most importantly, subscribe to the channel and stay subscribed because there's plenty more coming right here.